this is getting really common. People are buying solar panels and then two, three years down the road, they're buying a new vehicle. And when they buy a new vehicle, they're getting an electric one. This video is a work vlog and I'm going to be installing more solar panels on a customer's home. Throughout this video, I'm going to give you information that can be helpful. So let's go on up to the roof and take a look. So the first two things that you want to consider, can your inverter handle more solar panels? Does your roof have more space for solar panels? Most solar panel systems, whether you have micro inverters or string inverters or DC optimizers, they have design constraints where you can only put so many panels on a circuit or you can only backfeed so much power into your main panel. For this installation, there's plenty of square footage up here. It's just a matter of how to use the roof in order to get the most sun exposure for your solar panels. And I can only put seven panels on this array before the circuit's maxed out. I don't have enough room to put panels up there. I really don't have room to squeeze one in there or there. I think. And this is kind of a pain, but what I'm going to do is actually take those turtle vents out, relocate them to the other side, and then put three panels landscape on top of those portrait ones. I think if you're spending, you know, tens of thousands of dollars on a solar installation, it's very much worth it to get a roofer involved. And if you have any random turtle vents or pipe vents, move them. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. I've added the three additional panels to the south facing roof. This array looks perfect. I'd give you a close up look. Use the same mid clamps, the same rails, the same solar panels. So it fits in there. I'm gonna head home and uh, shower and hang out with the family and then i'm going to pick up those 10 solar panels and bring them by tomorrow um, just finished up all of the roof work um, so we have um, that bottom row added and the top row added it's all finished up and we're getting ready to uh, start the inverter so i'll break out the drone and give you a final look at everything I'm back at the home office. I'm gonna show you the math on how to calculate the exact amount of solar panels you need. For those of you who just want an idea, a solar panel will produce about 1,250 miles worth of electricity. So that's an average of the different electric vehicles out there and their relative efficiencies and an average of all the solar panels out there and their relative production numbers you are driving say about 10,000 miles per year, you can say, oh, I need about eight solar panels because each solar panel is gonna produce 1,250 miles worth of electricity on a yearly basis. The EPA breaks down efficiency of electric vehicles by rating them at a MPGE, so a miles per gallon equivalent. Find out what electric vehicle you're going to be buying and look this up along with that figure you can look up how many kilowatt hours it takes to drive that electric vehicle 100 miles if you look at say a tesla model 3 base you get about 26 kilowatt hours for every 100 miles driven meaning you need to charge that battery with 26 kilowatt hours to drive it 100 miles. If you break it down and look at, say, maybe the new Audi e-tron, it takes about 46 kilowatt hours to charge it for a 100 mile drive. Um, so it's a little bit less efficient. The next thing you need to do is figure out how many miles you're traveling each year. Maybe take your current vehicle, look at the odometer. This particular customer is going to be commuting 10,000 miles a year. The quickest way to do this, and it's pretty user-friendly, it's not that intimidating, is to go to pvwatts, uh, like pvwatts dot n-r-e-l dot gov. This website is a, uh, a free, easy way to estimate solar panel production. I'm just gonna go ahead and do Salt Lake 
Luke City. This is gonna bring up the sun hours and all the weather data for your area. So type in your city, hit next. So let's say we're using 340 watt panels. You can go through these settings, um, premium panels, it's open racking, that's fine. It's gonna default the losses at 14%, that's fine, leave it. If you know you have a real steep roof, put it more like 40 degrees. If you have a real flat roof, put it down at maybe the 1020. We'll leave the azimuth at 180 degrees, which is south facing. But if you're east facing, you're at 90 degrees. And if you're west facing, you're at 270 degrees. So you can kind of adjust that depending on what, um, what direction your roof faces and then leave the advanced parameters, residential, and then also you can put in your, um, maybe your blended kilowatt hour rate, which here in Utah, it's about 13 cents. Oh, one second, I always do this. This is kilowatts on the DC system rating. So that's 0.34, if that makes sense. It's 340 watts, 0.34 kilowatts. It's saying in my area, a solar panel is gonna produce about 521 kilowatt hours on an annual basis. This customer is going to travel 10,000 miles every single year. The electric vehicle needs an average, I would say for this vehicle, 36 kilowatt hours for every 100 miles. So in that situation, you need 3,600 kilowatt hours, if you follow me, every single year to drive that 10,000 miles. So if you divide the 3,600 by the amount of power that each panel will be producing, 521, you get about seven panels. I would say this is pretty average. Just from my experience in the past, I will install anywhere from five to 10 solar panels um, in order to compensate for the increased usage for charging an electric vehicle at home. Now there's a few other things to consider. Do you have like a one-to-one -one net metering or is there a reduced export credit? You might need to compensate for that. Another thing that you may want to consider is the cost of adding one panel versus the cost of adding two or three or four or five. There, there's going to be an amount that makes the most sense. On this solar installation, we had 20 panels. Each circuit could handle up to 15 solar panels. We had a circuit of 12, where we added those three panels landscape. And then we had a circuit of eight where we added seven more panels. And so we had two circuits of 15. Right there, we're kind of maxing out the system. We didn't have to update any wiring in the attic, didn't have to upgrade the inverter. Um, it was relatively easy just to tie into those circuits and add those panels. Now, if you wanted 11 panels, that may have been pulling new wire or redoing all the circuits on the roof or maybe upgrading the inverter and that would have been very costly to do that so in this situation it made a lot of sense even though the customer only needs about seven solar panels it made sense to add 10 it fit on the roof perfect and it maxed out the inverter another thing to consider in utah is adding more solar panels and i'm sure this is the same with other areas can kick you out of your current net metering agreement. So you need to check with the power company. If I add more panels, am I going to be on a different net metering agreement to get on a new schedule where it might be less favorable or there might be more fees associated with it? That's everything for me. I will be compiling these videos in different playlists. Go to our channel, subscribe, and you can check out the playlist if you're interested in say batteries or kind of work vlogs like this or electric car charging or whatever topic. Thanks so much, um, have a great day, and we'll see you in the next video.